We welcome you again in uh, another episode with the Hears of Faith. Uh, as we started these episodes, uh, we're always uh, being gra gracious to His Grace Bishop Yusuf, the uh, Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox uh, Diocese of Southern United States, for being with us throughout all these episodes. Thank you, Sayyidna, for being with us today. Uh, today we'll, um, we'll speak about one of those characters, heroes of faith. A young man who grew in a big family with many brothers, with a loving father, but he suffered many temptations and many afflictions throughout his life. You probably know who we are talking about. It's uh, Joseph. We call him Joseph the Righteous. Sayyidna, uh, Joseph is an amazing character uh, that uh, fascinates most of the youth and, uh, and becomes a very role model in their lives. Um, how do you think, Sayyidna, how he was able to build his self-control uh, faced with temptation of lusts, faced with temptations uh, of uh, being afflicted from his friends, from his uh, brothers. What do you think, Sayyidna, about Joseph and his self-control? The answer, we can find it in the letter of St. James, when he said that a person is tempted when he is enticed by his own desire. So actually, I say the desire, if I have ungodly desire, and if there is opportunity, so the desire plus the ungodly desire, sorry, the ungodly desire plus the opportunity will make a temptation. I'll be tempted, according to St. James. Uh, but if the desire is godly and pure and holy, then even if there is uh, opportunity for sin, the person will not be tempted. He will be strong and he will be able to say no. And I think this is the key with St. Joseph the Righteous. His desires were godly and his desires were holy. He was walking in the fear of God. God was in front of him and he realized that God is watching over him. That's why he said, how can I commit this great wickedness and sin against God? Walking in the fear of God will help the person to be able to say no to the temptation uh, because the desire is holy and ungodly and righteous. Uh, that's why the book of Proverbs says, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Is that when the person actually walks in the fear of God, he will be strong, he cannot fall in, in temptation, he will be able to say no. How we can build this self-control, Sayyidina? How we can be able as young um, adults and youth to start to, uh, what can we do as practices or um, things that we can acquire in our life to build these godly desires or how to make these desires uh, to become godly? Uh, there are some points Number one, actually, is the fear of God. As David the prophet said, I put God in front of me, lest I sin. So if we put God in front of us all the, the time, we will not sin. Like, you know, if I'm speaking in front of a recorder, and I know that my words are recorded, I'll be careful, I'll be watchful. We do now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because I know every word is recorded. But if just, you know, I, I'm speaking and nobody is recording, you know, I, I, I'll be at ease. Then actually I'll not be careful and watchful. It's the same idea. If I know that God's watching over me, that's how to walk in the fear of God. And actually all our actions, all our word, words, all our works are recorded. So when we walk in the fear of God, we will be able to, to develop self-control. That's why every day in our prayer, we say, uh, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all fear. 
So in all peace with your fear, in the fear of God. Number two, another tool that helps us to develop self-control is fasting. Why fasting? Fasting, I say no to the desire of food. For example, I need to eat right now, but no, I'm not going to eat. Why? Because I'm fasting. And I will restrain myself from certain types of food. So if I train myself and I'm able to say no to the desires of food, then actually I'll be able to say no to any other temptation. Uh, in the book of Zechariah, the people went to Zechariah to ask the Lord, should we continue to fast? And here is the reply of the Lord. He told them, did you fast for me? What he meant, when you fast, it is you who benefit from the fasting. It's not me. You know, God doesn't need our fasting. God does need our worship. But it's for us. We need His. We need Him. So when we fast or when we do any of these spiritual exercises, it's for us. Number three, actually, when you read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, with the foot of the Spirit, uh, the last one will be self-control. So the more I am controlled by the Spirit of God, this to be filled with the Spirit, then I will bear the fruit of self-control. So when I submit myself completely to the leadership of uh, the Holy Spirit, I will be able to develop uh, self-control. Uh, it's a training beside, you know, when I, I ask the Lord uh, to give me His grace, to strengthen me and to empower me to be able to say no to sin and temptation, I, I will be able to grow in this virtue of self-control. So I can summarize what you say, Sayyidna, is uh, number one, feed the presence of God in our life. And number two, the church life being fasting, prayer, and mm -hmm. uh, all these practices mm -hmm. that we do in life and to submit to the Holy Spirit in our life. Absolutely. That's great if we can do those things. Sayyidina, uh, it is uh, sometimes easy for all of us when life is good to us, when everything is going smooth and nothing we are facing. But Joseph, in contrary, he was facing a lot of troubles in his life. He faced some kind of uh, uh, jealousy from his brothers and also uh, he suffered being in prison, but he kept his composure and his relation with God. How we can keep our composure and all these things that we know, uh, especially under uh, temptations, under afflictions, and under tribulations? I think the answer to this is that Joseph, in his relationship with God, was not just a routine relationship. It was not a superficial relationship. But actually, it was a very deep relationship in which he was fulfilled by the presence of God in his life. Uh, and as we read the book of Proverbs, that the, the full soul despises honey. You know, when I am I'm hungry, I will eat anything. But if I'm full, even if you, you bring to me my favorite food, uh, I will re reject it, I will spy. So Joseph was fulfilled and satisfied by his relationship with God. So regardless, I am facing problems or I'm in prison or I'm facing temptation, you know, I cannot compromise my relationship with God for any other thing. I will not deny him because I went through, you know, difficult time. And this reminds me of the parable of the sower. When the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about uh, the seeds uh, planted among the thorns, they accepted, you know, they started to bear fruit until what happened, you know, uh, thorns choke the word of God. You know? And, and uh, the other land uh, among the stones, you know, when the sun of, of tribulation and hardship shone, what happened? Died. And the, the third type, the, the, the road, because on superficiality, on the surface, 
There is no depth. It did not bring any fruit. So what I'm trying to say, in order to be able to continue with God, even in the midst of hardship, I shouldn't be like the stony ground or like the ground full of thorns or like the road. But I have to, uh, through the grace of God, to clean my heart from all the thorns, from the hardness of heart, the stony ground, from the hardness of heart, and to not to be superficial, but to, de to be deep. And I think this is the, the case with Joseph. That's why he bears the fruit in his life. So even when the sun of, of temptation or, or tribulation or hardships shone on him when he was in prison, or the thorns, the worries, the pleasures, the riches, all these things couldn't take away from him his love for God and his commitment to have a serious relationship with God. Love also, Sayyidina, is, uh, is uh, a virtue that we all look forward to have and to grow in it. Um, the, the biggest difficulty is when we face people who don't love us, uh, how we can deal with them, how we can react to their actions to us. Actually, Joseph showed us a big example uh, dealing with his brothers. Uh, so Sayyidina, uh, being loved is easy to deal with, but being hated is sometimes a difficulty. How we can deal with these things in our life? Here I want to say uh, love is not ability, it is a choice. And here I'm differentiating between the emotional love, uh, which we can refer to as eros or sometimes as philia. There is a difference between eros and philia. And the agape love. Agape love is uh, willful. It is the faculty of the will, not of the emotion, not of the heart. A choice that I make, not ability that I express. Otherwise, the commandment like love your enemies will be very, very difficult for all of us, how can I have emotion toward my enemy, toward those who hate me? But here I can choose, even if, if I have no feeling toward them, but I can choose to do good to them. Uh, as St. Paul teaches us in his letter to Romans, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. So if I choose to treat them well, because of the love of Christ that it abides in my heart. So if I choose to treat them well, then actually the, the love will be processed from my mind into my heart. And eventually I can have feeling for them. This happened with Joseph. Joseph was in his uh, ability uh, to, to treat his brothers bad after he became the second man of Egypt and to revenge for himself, but he chose not to do this. And uh, he empowered by, by, by himself by looking at God when he told them, it is not you who sent me here, it is God who sent me here. So when he looked at what happened to him as the economy of God, as the plan of God, not his, his uh, brothers, so he was able to make a choice not to repay them evil for evil, but to repay them good instead of, of the evil. Uh, and here, how can we perceive another point? How can we perceive what happened in our life? It's not the people who did this to us, but actually everything God uh, used it for our benefit. And God actually can reorder things for our benefit. So even if their intention to harm me, but God will use this for my benefit. And that's what uh, Joseph told to them. You intended to hurt me, but God intended with the same action, good for me. So it's a choice. And here we have a choice to choose to do good to them. And thus we will grow in the agape love. There's another also important point 
in, uh, in the life of Joseph, which is managing his affairs and managing even the affairs of a whole country like Egypt for Pharaoh chose him to be able to uh, save his people from famine. Uh, I think this is a very interesting point for our youth, but we're going to keep it for next episode. So thank you, Sayyidna, for being with us today. Uh, and as I always say, and you know it now, uh, if God was able to reveal himself in all these characters, he will be able to reveal himself in you. Thank you.